Hi everybody. Today we're gonna make some beef broth. So let's uh, get out to the kitchen and I'll show you how I made it. It's very similar to the uh, chicken broth that I make. All right, let's head out to the kitchen and I'll get started with the video. Okay, today I'm going to make some beef bone broth. So the process is very similar to that of the chicken broth. And then I'll show you what I do. So what I use is I have some beef marrow bones here. And I preheat my oven to 375 degrees or so or so sometimes I'll put it at 350 mostly 375 and I put these on the tray then because I have some oxtail I'll put that on there This brings a lot of good flavor in. Okay, and then I have some of these veggies. That's carrots, celery, and onion. And I just put them here on the tray and roast them. It just adds to the flavor a little more. Sometimes I just throw them right in with the broth in the pot later on, but this way seems to add just a little more flavor. So however you want to do it, you can do it. I change it up a little bit here and there, but it's basically the same each time when I make them. So, so there you go. There's your tray. And... All I do then is just put it in the oven and my oven's not quite hot yet but I'll put it in there I let it go until they're nice and brown and you start to see the little brown bits sticking onto the pan and that's when I will take it out and proceed to put it in the stock pot so when that's ready, when I get to that point with this, I'll come back and we'll do the rest. Okay, so we're back. I just took this big tray of our beef bones and roasted vegetables out of the stove just a few minutes ago, out of the oven. And I'm gonna put it, this batch, Sometimes I use a big stock pot like this one right over here, which actually has some chicken broth in it. But today, and sometimes I do it this way. My mama used to do it this way all the time. So I'm going to use the crock pot today. So I'll just put all this stuff in here. And you can see the veggies, they got they got nice and brown and that's going to make a lot of nice flavor for the broth. So I'll get these all in here. I hope they're all going to fit in here. I think they will. Let's turn it a little bit. Let's come back this way. I think that's better. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's better. Okay. So I'll just put all these bones in there. Right there. And then we'll get all these veggies here. Put them in. This pan has a lot of nice scrapings on it. Brown stuff from the veggies and the meat and it smells so good already 
<laughs> and it's not even halfway done yet, but it just smells awesome. <laughs> like my husband used to say, it smells so good it'll make your tongue beat your brains out. Yep. <laughs> he used to make me laugh when he said that. Oh my. I do miss him. Okay. Now I got all the veggies off of that pan and all the meat. So what I do, what I'll do now is I take a little bit of water and I'll pour in this pan here um, while I'm doing the rest of this. Sort of let some of this soak up. And so I can get the scrapings off of there easier to put in with this broth. It's just, I'm going to put the water in there and I just scrape around a little bit. I scrape as much as I can to get as much off as I can to go in with the broth. You're not going to get it all off because it's stuck on there pretty good most of the time. But you do get a good bit of them. And it really makes your broth really taste good. Okay, so I'll let that sit for a minute. Oh, and something else I wanted to show you. Here's another bag of bones. This is, and I just label them for beef broth. I don't know if you can see that. What it is, is if I have a steak that has a bone in it, I save them and I put them in this bag and I put them in the freezer. So, for when I make broth, I have bones. And these really add a lot of flavor too. I never throw anything away until I'm really done with it. So that's that. All of those are shoved down in there. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll take this pan and you gotta be careful when you do this because sometimes if you're not real careful, it will spill. So definitely don't do it while your dogs are behind you. Right now, mine are in their crates. I just fed them their dinner. And um, now you might see on this pan a lot of, uh, like, looks like a lot of fatty globs. That's just fat that cooked out of the, uh, the marrow bones. But go ahead and scrape it in here anyway. We're not done with it yet. So just scrape it on the pot here. Okay. And let me turn that buzzer off. That timer will drive me crazy. Okay. So that's all in there. This is a large crock pot. I'm not sure how big it is, but it's it's one of the larger ones. I guess I should know. I think it will hold two gallons of liquid just without anything else in there, but I'm not sure how many quart crock pot it is. It's considered. All right, now I'm gonna put some salt in this too because I did not salt this at all. But with this, it's I'm gonna put a teaspoon in. One teaspoon of pink salt. And then I'll just put some water in it. This is really easy method. A lot of times I do use the big stock pots too. But this is nice if you just want a smaller batch course it's going to be potent because I have a lot of bones so what I will do is I'll actually make a second 
after I drain all of this broth out after it's finished, I'll strain it out. I'll leave the bones and veggies in here and I'll fill it back up with water and do it again so it'll make a second batch. First batch is very strong, the second batch is not as strong. And then when the second batch is done, then I mix them both together in a pot before I get ready to strain them and put them in their containers. So, okay. So there's the uh, water. And again, take some apple cider vinegar like we did with our chicken broth. A capful will do. And just put in there. All right. And then, well, that's pretty much it. I fill it up to... I really fill it up as much as I can to just below where the lid fits on. Okay, and then I'll put it over on my, in the crock pot and turn it on. I turn it on high. This 5.30 p.m. So I'll turn it on high. Before I go to bed, I will turn it down to low which will be about four hours from now. I'm usually in bed between 9 and 10 o'clock. So I'll turn it on low before I go to bed, and I'll let it cook all night on low, probably about 12 hours, and I'll check it. And then when I come back to check it in the morning, we'll go from there, and then I'll tell you what I do next. Okay. I'll see you soon. Okay, it's morning. The next morning now, and I turned the crock pot off about an hour ago. So it cooked in here for, oh, let's see. I had it on, I started it on high. And then I left it there on high for about four hours. I turned it down on low when I went to bed around 10. And I turned it off around 6.30. So it's been in there for a little over 12 hours. And I, I turned it off to cool off a little bit. And it smells so good. And look how good this looks. It just looks fabulous. I haven't had breakfast yet, so my stomach's growling just looking at this. So what I'll do is, once it cools off just a little bit more, I'm going to take the crock out of this container so it will cool quicker and set it on the counter. But once it's cooled off a little bit more, I will strain all the broth out of this. And then I'll put all this back in the pot and fill it up with water and make another pot because it will give me another batch of broth it just won't be as concentrated but once I mix the first one and the second batch together it'll be just perfect so that's what I'm gonna do I will uh, get back with you when I have it all ready to be put into containers or I'll come back and show you how I strain it pretty simple process really but I'll I'll show you that. All right, see you later. Okay, we're back again for a few minutes. I cooled my broth there in the crock pot and I'm going to strain the broth, get the veggies and meat out of it. So I'll put what I do is I usually just use another little pot, smaller pot, and I put a strainer in there. <clears throat> and that's how I strain it out. Usually it works out quite well, but you have to be careful that you don't spill it because it's quite full of bones and things like that. So. What I do is I dump as much out as I can, and then I just grab a pair of tongs, and I, uh, I 
take it out manually so I don't spill because I've done that before and dumped half of my stuff into the sink and you don't really want to do that so this is the way I do it now after I dump most of the liquid out because I don't want to lose all this stuff because we're going to make another pot full of this broth because these bones are not spent yet and the veggies still have flavor so just putting as much in here as I can You can see the vegetables got soft and Okay, let's see. One more big bone. <gasps> this big bone, that was from a tomahawk ribeye that I didn't think I could even find in my area, but I was surprised when I saw it at Walmart and I don't normally buy my meats and things like that at Walmart. Hard, in fact, I never do until I saw that tomahawk ribeye there because I've been wanting to try one. And so I've got it twice now from there. And I have to say, it was delicious. It was really delicious. Some of my Facebook friends, you guys have seen that I posted about it. And it looked good. It tasted good, too. So, the next time I have one, I'll make a little video of it. Okay, then I just finished dumping the broth through there. And I'll let it sit here and strain through for a few minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll just put the... All those bones and veggies, I'll put it back in this crock pot and then I'll let it cook again overnight and I'll have another batch of beef broth tomorrow then I will combine the two skim the fat off all of it and put it in freezer containers so I'll be back tomorrow with the final steps see y'all later Oh, one other thing I forgot to, I, I put the bones and veggies back in the crock pot, but what I wanted to show you was, I forgot to do this, and so let me set this colander over here. I want to show you how nice this broth looks. That's what I was forgetting to do. I'll put it in a clear container so you can see. It's just beautiful. I think you can see that. It's gorgeous and it tastes so good already. So, okay. Off to the next step. See you again in about 12 to 16. No, about 16 hours from now, I suppose. Okay. Later. Okay. So... This is my the first batch of the beef broth that I made in the crock pot and it's cool so I can skim this fat off of it now and what I'm going to sometimes and it's, it's thick so it'll come off real easily see sometimes I save this and rinse it and clean it because then I use it fat uh, for, for cooking, for frying, you know, it's like, it's like beef tallow. But you have to uh, rinse it a few times and things like that. I'm not saving it this time because I have some and I don't use a lot of it. So I'll just get it out of here. Yeah, I'm making a mess too. <laughs> I usually do. That's okay. 
It's all right. Messes are made to be cleaned up, right? Right. Okay. If you notice this cooled broth has thickened up and it's almost like jello. And that's how you know that you got what you needed out of the bones. Okay. Now, I got that out. I'll move that over here out of the way. Here's my crock with the second round of broth. You know, as you remember, I refilled it with water and then let it cook again overnight. So, what I'll do now, I'll just add it to this. Drain the broth into the pot. getting ready to come flying out of here. Let me see if I can help them a little. Okay. And yes, I, I washed my hands before we started this, so any of you germaphobes don't freak out, okay? Alright. I'll just put this here, and I'll let this Drain the juices, drain in there. Okay. All right. Put that there. All right. So, see that put a lot more broth into the pot there. I'll let it drip in there for a few minutes yet, and then I'll put it back in the fridge. Okay, so the broth is basically done now. The only thing left to do is I'll put it back in the fridge because there's still a little fat from this new batch I just added. So I'll let that cool off and I'll skim that fat off of it. Once I do that, then it's ready to be put in containers and either freeze it or put it in your refrigerator. I'll taste this because... I think it's still going to be really concentrated, so I may add water to it just to make it not as strong, but I, I won't know that until after I skim the second round of fat off and taste it. I may not do that. I, it just depends on what it tastes like. So that is that. and. Anyway, that's how easy it is to make it. What I do is, after I skim that second round of fat off of there, I have, I just buy them at the dollar store, the little plastic round two and three cup containers with the snap-on lids. And I fill them up. I leave a little bit of space. You got to leave a little bit of space at the top. Uh, so when it freezes, it expands, so you don't want it to pop the lid off. But I just fill up those containers and put them in the freezer and write on there what it is, and voila, there you go. A shout out to my friend Tabitha. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and if you like it, that's all right. That's great. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Give me a couple comments. It really helps. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now.